It's Jo here from It's J Life. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thanks for stopping by. If you've been following me for a while, you will know that I sadly lost my 2013 iMac about eight months ago. And I cried, I think. It was always sat pride of place on the desk here in the background. And I loved it. I used it every single day when I was getting ready. I edited on it. I just absolutely loved it. It did everything that I wanted to do. It was smart. It looked good. And yeah, it broke. The GPU went in it. So I spoke to a couple of people who I know. My cousin's really up on computers. And he was like, look, Joe, you know, you're going to have to get an all part possibly to fix it from the looks of it. And even if you do fix it, it'll be an all part from a similar age model. So you don't know how long that's going to last. So I made a decision that I was going to upgrade it. But of course, I had to wait for them to launch the new iMacs. As you can see, this isn't an iMac. No. So, this is a completely different Mac M1 setup <laughs> to what I was actually going to go for. So basically, I took myself off with my mum when they launched these new amazing iMacs. And I went into the shop and to be honest I was a bit disappointed. Um, the pink model looked more red to me, the yellow model looked more yellowy gold to me and yeah I couldn't really pick a colour that I liked. I just had this kind of idea when I heard that colours were going to be involved and I thought in my mind that they were going to go old school. So when I think of old school Mac, I think of the white rounded back kind of monitor, the big chunky monitor and it was like transparent colours and it was really, really trendy and like wow for the time. And I thought that they were going to go more retro. Uh, with the transparent oranges and the turquoises and all of that. When I saw the colours, I was a bit like, that's not what I had in mind. That's not how I would have designed them. And I'm not really a fan. So I kind of tried to sell them to myself and then I, I just couldn't. So I, I just sat on the fence for a while and thought, you know, I, I want a new Apple computer, I want an Apple computer, I don't want another brand, however I don't really want them computers. So I was talking to my cousin, he mentioned the M1 Mac Mini setup and recommended that I might think of getting that, however I started looking into it and although I'm a techie person, I'm far from like being a complete and utter computer genius and I thought oh that sounds a bit technical for me I just want something that's all set up then I follow a lovely lady on here called Pia and she got a Samsung Odyssey a, a much bigger monitor than this it's a G9 that she got it's absolutely it's about 40 something inch and it, I was like wow I want one of them <laughs> So I was like, yeah, um, oh, I want one of them. So I looked into it and I was like, yeah, that's out of my price range. Right? It's like quite an expensive monitor. Um, and then I started looking into it more and more and more and more. And this is what I came up with. Wait, I must give credit to Pia. I will link her channel down below because she was the one who invited, who kind of, made me realise that this was a thing, that I could have a Samsung curved 34 inch monitor with a Mac Mini. So I, that's where I got the, the idea from. So I must give her the credit for that. So guys, this is the setup that we've got. We've got the Samsung G5 34 inch widescreen Odyssey monitor. Then we have got the Mac Mini down the bottom there. Now this is just the basic Mac Mini. It retails for £699 and it is the 2020 M1 with 256 gigabytes 
of SSD and an 8 gigabyte RAM. So I didn't go up to the, the next one which offers you 512 gigs and 8 gigs of RAM still for 849. I didn't think that it was worthwhile for me to do that because I will be using an external SSD with it. All of my external SSD currently goes onto a Seagate um, hard drive which I haven't actually got plugged in at the moment because I haven't had to use it yet for anything. However, I will be purchasing it. It's like, um, it sits, it's a similar kind of silver colour to this that I've seen other YouTubers recommend and it has ports in it and also has a, a built-in kind of place for an external hard drive. So I will be purchasing one of those, but just right now, obviously, I've just fought out for the monitor and the M1, so all of them little bits will come as and when. So up here, the other thing that I've had to purchase, which I am using right now on the screen, is this Logitech webcam. Obviously, the Mac Mini and the monitor didn't come with a built-in webcam. A lot of the monitors that you buy don't actually have a built-in webcam to them, surprisingly enough. So it is something that I've had to purchase separately. And I have bought the C220 HD webcam by Logitech. It is only 720p and 30 frames per second. However, I'm quite impressed. I did a lot of research into it and you do have to be quite careful. I was actually looking at a different model, a slightly more expensive model. I think it was the Razer something or other. However, when I started looking into that, there was quite a lot of comments where people were saying they were having problems with connectivity with it and it wasn't working with their M1 Mac whatever that they had so I was like oh you know everyone said that this one works it's cheap as chips and people have said it's good considering it's 720 and for what I use it for which is generally like reaction YouTube videos and things like that maybe a bit of FaceTime with my mum if we go if we were to don't say it but go into another lockdown or something so that really is all that I need the other thing is although the M1 Mac Mini comes with built-in speakers. They're very tinny and they're not very good at all. So that is something again that I haven't purchased yet. I'm currently using my Amazon Echo Show Bluetooth to this and that is working as some speakers but I don't kind of like it. All the sounds just come in from one place and it doesn't feel right. I do downstairs have a Sonos sound beam, which I was considering moving up here. However, it is quite big, it is quite cumbersome, and it might be too much. So if anyone can recommend some speakers that are reasonably priced, but a good quality that will work with this setup, then please do let me know. I don't want anything that's gonna take up too much space on the desk, because it's already taken up by this. Now, the monitor itself, the stand that it comes on, isn't the best. I must say it but I had watched other videos on YouTube and already kind of knew that the stand wasn't going to be the best. I have considered getting it's a bit like an arm like that it's a bracket with like a round thing that sits in the back I forget what the bracket's called it's got a name and that would kind of stick to my desk and kind of almost allow me to move it around <laughs> that looks so strange move it around and swivel it without attaching it to the wall or anything. So that is something again that I'm looking into that I might do in the future when I get some more pennies back from my initial outlay of this setup. The biggest issue that I have had so far is the Bluetooth connectivity issue. So I have a keyboard like this, it's a battery one. It's the Apple battery one. It hasn't got a cable connector like the new ones do so it's the battery one so I came in one morning to use my computer and pop it on now I'm not although I'm techie I'm not a computer genius and I can't find a way of switch once it goes off into standby mode it asks you to put in a password and I can't seem to find a way of switching that off and when I googled it and watched videos on it Nobody else could offer me that information either on YouTube. So um, if you know that I can switch that off, please do let me know down below. But anyway, I was totally locked out of my computer. 
<laughs> so I kind of did what everyone does and I got my trusty phone and I started to try and obviously get back access to the computer. But I couldn't and nobody really could tell me other than if I'd put the accessibility keyboard on that screen from the settings beforehand then I would have access to it and there was a lot of things I could have set up kind of in hindsight knowing that this might happen but I didn't know that this was going to happen and it only happened when I upgraded to the Mac OS Big Sur. When I initially used it, I think it was on Catalina, don't quote me on that, but I think it was on Catalina and I noticed the update was there so I was like, oh, you know, update, you know, it improves security, improves everything like that, so I updated. The minute I updated, I had Bluetooth connectivity issues. Now yesterday, I did update, the computer itself automatically updated to Big Sur, but the version 11.5.2. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to actually find out what that update included. So I'm hoping it's got the Bluetooth connectivity issues that a lot of people are reporting as an update. So this might actually be fixed. As you can see, the, the keyboard itself actually is working and everything. Um, it's got batteries full battery level and everything like that luckily the key the mouse the magic mouse didn't have an issue with that i do like the magic mouse i'm quite used to using it and i like it so i had to go out and purchase a keyboard so i went out and purchased this keyboard it's an rgb keyboard that is supposed to light up however it doesn't it doesn't light up the only thing that lights up on it's the um the cap the caps lock so it doesn't light up although it says it is mac compliant and it works with mac it does it types it's set up the keys work in the correct formats and everything for me i've set it up but from what i can gather and again if anyone can help me with this mac doesn't seem to support rgb keyboards <laughs> So yeah, that's strange. Um, I don't really understand why, but the keyboard will not light up. So that is an issue. So the issues I've been having is Bluetooth connectivity with this and the keyboard that I've decided to buy. I thought well, if I'm going to buy one, I'll buy a fun one that lights up and it doesn't light up with the Mac. I've tested it on my laptop and it lights up absolutely fine. So yeah, that's a bit of a shame. I can't get that to light up. But other than that, I'm really enjoying my experience with this setup and everything. There's lots more that I want to do with it to make it better in the future. And it's something that I'm going to be working with. I just love the fact like I can, that's like my editing software. I can have it full screen like so. Or I can have it smaller um, then I can be kind of googling something if I need to do something else and then I can be watching some of my favorite youtubers videos as well on the screen oh we've got Sean here from Theme Park Worldwide who I follow and it looks like he's currently in Port Aventura it's playing away there so yeah I'm gonna have to watch that one I didn't realize you'd put that up but you can see the video quality there it's it's great I'm so happy with it because I was quite concerned that I might not get the quality and I might I might visually see that however for my eyes I have no problem in what I'm seeing on the screen I'm quite happy about it so the monitor itself has a button down here and you can adjust the volume and things by moving it around and whatnot. So guys, that's the setup. I've got a lot more to be adding to it in the future. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Consider smashing that big red subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And if I can be of help, drop me a comment down below. I'll be happy to help you. And if you can answer some of my questions that I had throughout the video, then please do leave a comment down below. I would very much appreciate it and I will see you in my next video. Bye.